Coming out of the Iowa primary, the big winners were Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, and anyone who didn't build that shitty app. And last night in New Hampshire, those top two kept their momentum going. With a win in New Hampshire, Senator Bernie Sanders taking control as the Democratic front runner, but not too far behind him, Pete Buttigieg. Despite winning the popular vote in both Iowa and New Hampshire, Sanders is behind in the overall delegate race by two. One of the night's other big winners, Senator Amy Klobuchar, who took third place. She capitalized on the moment by reintroducing herself to the country. Hello, America. I'm Amy Klobuchar, and I will beat Donald Trump. Yes, last night may have been the best night for Bernie Sanders since he won that free cruise on Noah's Ark, but <laughs> New Hampshire's biggest surprise was Amy Klobuchar, who burst into the national spotlight with a third place finish. And the timing couldn't be better for Klobuchar. Because in many ways, you see, the presidential campaigns are like getting drunk at a party, right? You wanna peak at the right time. See, the other candidates, they had their surge last year, which was too early. It's like getting wasted at 6 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> because by the time the party's really going, you're puking in the bushes like, oh, I'm, so, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't base myself. <laughs> I promise I'll do better in South Carolina. <laughs> so there's no denying that New Hampshire was great for Amy Klobuchar's campaign. And it was also a great night for news people who love wordplay. Senator Amy Klobuchar rode the Clomentum. Are you feeling Clomentum? Clomentum is real, and she has it. A Clobus surge. Clomentum. 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 Clobu charged. Clobu surge. They call it Clo motion. Is there Clomentum? Oh, this is fun. I want to try. I want to try. It's clobering time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She gave them the old cloper dope. <laughs> yeah, New Hampshire has an outbreak of clomidia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. She killed it like Clo J. Simpson. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No more. No more. No more. No more. <laughs> So for Bernie, Buttigieg, and Klobuchar, New Hampshire was a dream. But unfortunately for some other big name candidates, it turned into a nightmare. Another major New Hampshire headline, the candidates who fell far behind, including longtime national frontrunner Joe Biden and Senator Elizabeth Warren, both failed to get enough votes to earn any delegates. Before the race was called, Biden, who placed fifth, was on a plane to South Carolina, which will hold the nation's next primary. Biden saw the writing on the wall. He had left even before the polls had closed, live streaming into his campaign's New Hampshire watch party. Oh, Joe Biden left New Hampshire before the polls were even closed? I mean, I've heard of fans leaving the game early, but you know it's bad when the team leaves early <laughs> to beat the traffic. The coach is just like, all right, guys, screw the fourth quarter. Uh, let's just start the bus. <laughs> I also feel especially bad for Biden's supporters. I'll say that. Think about it. You came all the way out to see your candidate, and then instead, all you get is a video Hey, imagine you were in, like, the dentist chair and your doctor pops up on the screen like, Aloha from Hawaii. <laughs> Here are three simple steps to perform your own root canal. <laughs> so while Biden supporters wept frozen New Hampshire tears, the man himself was already in South Carolina looking toward the future. Joe Biden spent his I night never... in South Carolina. His campaign is staking survival on his strength with black voters. I want y'all to think of a number. 99.9%. That's the percentage of African American voters who have not yet had a chance to vote in America. Up till now, we haven't heard from the most committed constituency of the Democratic Party, the African American community. That's right, Joe Biden's campaign has basically become a Medea movie. <laughs> if black people don't turn up, it's toast. <laughs> and even though he's desperate, Biden does make a good point. It is a little weird, you have to admit, it is a little weird that the story of the Democratic race has now been written by two states that aren't representative of the Democratic Party. All right, think about it. Two overwhelmingly white states shape who the Democratic nominee will be. Then right? that's long before minority voters have had their say. It's almost as if the Democratic Party is having a buffet, but then white people get to pick the menu, you know? And if you're black, that sucks, because you get there and you're just like, man, why the hell is there raisins and everything, man? <laughs> And, and who the f is Broccoli Rob? 
So that's where the race stands after two primaries. Buttigieg and Bernie are neck and neck, and all the other candidates are hoping for a boost in Nevada and South Carolina. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for us to go away for a commercial break. Get it? <laughs>